Oh, welcome to On The Chain. Welcome On The Chain community. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. He's right over there. Welcome, Chip. Good to see you here today. Good to see everybody. I just want to put out one quick quote here from Frogadelic Research Group. Wow, today. Man, that, that's everything. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the XRP settlement, Bitcoin bull run, altcoin mania. Is this a short-term bull run or is this long-term adoption with Main Street institutions, corporations, all buying into crypto? It's all getting ready to start right now. Welcome to On The Chain with Jeff and Chip. Hey Jeff, hope Whoa. you had a great weekend. Um, had a great stream yesterday. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. He did a great job yesterday. Awesome, was, awesome job. It was, good it was a lot of fun. I got to say it was a lot of fun, but um, you know, it's always weird when you're, when you're like soloing it. You know, it's like I was Chip Solo, not con to be confused with Han Solo from Star, Star Wars. And um, but you know it's know this is. is this is fun. Whoa! You don't know who Han Solo is? What the hell, man? We got. Hey, we I want to yo. I want to say what's up to Jose. Today is Jose's first day on YouTube on the chain because he normally tunes into us on our podcast over on Spotify. That's awesome. Uh, what's Welcome, up, Jose. Jose? Welcome, Jose. Can you see? Um, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of fun there. Yeah, I can see. I can see you right huh. there. What's going on, Jose? Uh, How you doing, man? What good is to up? see you. What is up? What is up, good people? So, man, so crazy day today, man. Today was insane for me in the stock market, uh, and it was insane in the crypto space. I'll tell you what, man. I was showing tons and tons of patience, and I overextended my patience <laughs> because I got busy yesterday and I wanted to buy some stuff yesterday. I ended up buying today, and I bought it. It was like uh a little over almost two hundred dollars more than what i wanted to pay for it but at the same time good investment the space is going places man i mean it's it's crazy you gotta kind of just get in man it's crazy just get in dip your dip your feet in the water you know sometimes it's a little bit cold you just gotta jump in you know that's the way i like to go in the pool in the backyard it's like it's super cold right now and if i like tiptoe into it I, like, I don't want to do it, but if you just jump in, man, you know, get it right over the shock, yeah. everything. Dude, I bought I bought another direct listing today. Oh, did you? It was, it was insane, you know, I mean, it, and it was just like I, I was reading about it, did it like real quick research. It just le uh, listed uh, last week, like on Thursday, and it was still like just opening to the public today, and I jumped in on it, but the direct oh, listing, nice. so much better than an IPO. Oh, absolutely. Went up, and it went up for like $4.00 you know, uh, within an hour of buying it. That's the way to do it. What's up, Ronnie Size, says Chip, what's up? Drop in the chat where you're from. We like to feature it as we go. So we like to throw it up on screen. So please do that. Hey, look at this, Ronnie Size, Chip and Jeff, take my hat off to both of you. Thank you for what you do, namaste. Hey, I will say thank you for you guys being in the chat. Yeah. You guys really coming in awesome. here and supporting this and you know, you're the wind be beneath our sails. That's exactly how it works, right, Ronnie? Something like that. <laughs> that's how it works, Ronnie. So that's how. Hey, what is this? XRP run. Brian Brooks. XRP was a security. We're going to talk about that today. Um, I think that is a great, great place to start. So XRP run. Thanks for that. You know, we definitely want to just dive right into the deep end or shallow end. How head first. Go, yeah, dive head. into the. We want to dive into that shallow end head first for maximum impact. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Let's do that today. Let's go. So Santiago Velez, who I have a high opinion of, he came out with this. He said, you know, now James Rule XRP put the Brian Brooks video out, which we're gonna jump into, but I wanted to handle this first because he says my view all along, and he's talking about what Brian Brooks says: a digital asset has two components method of distribution and operational decentralization and both of these things can change over time it is therefore possible for something to have been a security at one time and then no longer be also the opposite and this is a lot of what the show was focused on yesterday which which really had to do jeff with fundamentals like you it. know are they important but really you know it was one of the things that 
John Deaton had tweeted about in a, in a, in a beautiful Twitter thread saying the SEC kind of hinted at the fact. Now, he didn't say the word hint. I'm using that word hint. But the fact is, is they were looking at 2013, 2014, accusing uh, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, and Ripple of potentially selling an unregistered security. However, as time went on, they're not, they're, there's no fraud alleged. There's none of this other stuff. So, yeah, that's exactly what it seems to be doing. And I think probably a good idea right now is let's take – first of all, I want to hear your thoughts on just the whole idea of something – can it morph over time? Can it change? Can it can it fluctuate, if if you will? Can it fluctuate? I mean, I, you know, I think it can. You know, why not? You know, I mean, it's it's been shown to already. Exactly. Um, Ethereum is a good example, right? Uh, XRP, another prime example. Tons of a lot of the digital assets in the space, I think, are really good examples of changing. By the and way, they one of my, were at one point on art now. Exactly. And one of my friends out there hit me up earlier and he's uh if he's watching on Facebook right now, K Wood, an old friend of mine. I've never seen anybody pronounce Ethereum the way he pronounced it. And I have to go back to see how he pronounced it. I was like, I don't know how you got that, but I knew what you were talking about. I knew Dude, it, you actually have people watching on Facebook right now as we speak. Which is kind of cool, right? We're, we are, guys, if you don't know, we're broadcasting to a lot of different places. We're on Twitch right now. We're broadcasting on Jeff's Twitter, my Twitter, OTC's Twitter, and also YouTube. And where else? There's one other location. Oh, and Facebook. Your Facebook, yeah. yeah. And my Facebook. If you're in any of those places, come on over to YouTube. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun, man, because you can hang with us. But, you know, Twitter's not bad. At least Twitter, at least you can comment. Twitch, you can, too. We'll see that, we'll see that yeah. stuff um, show up as well. Yep. But... But let's go take a look at this here because this is what um, – let me go ahead and make this thing full screen. This is um, Brian Brooks, former controller of the OCC. And I just let's see if we have volume. Obviously, there's some people. Well, it's not that low. You just got to turn it up. Let me see if we go. Turn up the volume. It's turned up as far as it goes. Sometimes these Twitter videos are very low, which is sad. But yeah, it is – as high as it goes. Now play it and let's hear it. Let's see. Tell me if you guys – Obviously, there's some people coming into the Biden administration who agree with that. You know, if it is true that Michael Barr is my successor at the OCC, I think he's likely to have more of a thesis similar to mine on this. He has a background having uh, spent some time on the Ripple Advisory Board, for example. Uh, and on the other hand, Secretary Yellen has sent some. This is funny, Jeff. He talks about he spent some time on the Ripple Advisory Board, right? Yep. This is uh, Brian Brooks. He knows a lot about what's going on in the space, right? And it's funny what he says. Let's let's listen to what he says about Janet Yellen because uh, it kind of ties into what we said. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Do you have a phone call during this uh, important I, moment? I do. Okay. I do. Hang on one second. Hang on. All right. So he's got to take. Uh, might be important. I don't know. All right. Well, hit your mute button because I know I get. I sometimes get these work Hello. calls. I gotta grab. Go ahead. Hit Hello. your mute. How do I mute? There you go. Okay. So we're gonna listen in on this. It's probably something we said something very similar. He's talking about Janet Yellen relatively skeptical things about about the asset. Backed it up a little bit. Things. Yellen has said some relatively skeptical things about about the asset class. So I don't think it's a partisan issue. I think it's more about who's a who's a tech adopter and who's an innovator versus who isn't. Brian, speaking of Ripple. You so this is very telling right here. I just, I just let's uh, let's remove this for a second. He actually goes on to say that it's um, he actually goes on to say that it's very telling. They're either someone who's going to be an early adopter, someone that's going to embrace technology, or they're not. A little bit of a dig at Yellen, but I think a very spot on. It's not done in a mean way, but he's basically talking about somebody who's embracing the future versus somebody who kind of, I don't know, does she sit there in line and write checks still? And she signs her name like it's the last thing she's going to do. You can put a giant X and no one's going to know. That's what I think might be happening. Potentially, but let's jump back into this here. Let's hey, take a look. What is up? All right, we're ready. Okay, you work we're fired up. Case. You worked in the government, albeit for under a year. So tell us, is XRP a security, yes or no? <laughs> well, you know, these are complicated questions and matters of pending litigation, so who can say? But here, here's what I would tell you, though, which I think is the most important issue about XRP, and that is there is a difference, okay? There's a difference between the way in which an asset is distributed and the nature of the asset at a given moment in time. And I think the issue in Ripple that gets lost in all of the discussion is whatever happened in the original distribution of XRP tokens, you know, 10 years ago, and whether that was or wasn't an unregistered securities offering, 
That's what the courts will decide. That's a different question from whether XRP today is a security. And the SEC itself has said that assets can change their nature over time as they achieve utility and as they achieve decentralization. So if I have to make a prediction, I'll just make a mute. prediction. Or with that. Pause. You know, if it is there we go. All right. So check that out. You know, I think you know what you said a couple of like really critical points, you know, with, with all of this. Um, and if you were to, you know, rewind it, has he, you know, he's talking about the two different components of of the digital asset. Uh, and you know, and then he even gets into with XRP, you know, how XRP was originally, uh, you know, launched. It, you know, I think it, this is, it's really, really, you know, telling what he said, because at first he said, when they said, well, is it a security or not? He's basically saying, well, that's for the court to decide, but listen to this. And then he kind of unfolds, you know, his thought process. Well, that's exactly right. And what he's kind of alluding to is the fact that something can change over time. And what it started out as is not even close to what it is right now, especially when you look at all the use cases. By the way, I really love that piano behind him. It's all white. It's got a beautiful keyboard. It's a very beautiful little thing, a white stand. He's got a lot of white tones going on in his house, which I really dig. Anyway, that's, a, that's an aside, but I think he's absolutely spot on. And Brian Brooks, you know, like he said, if that indeed is his successor, you know, he's probably going to be lockstep with some of the thinking, right? Somebody who really understands digital assets. And he made that one comment about Janet Yellen saying some, this about some, whether it's about embracing technology or not. And he said she made some, what was it, like offhanded remarks about it or disparaging remarks, something along those lines. So yeah, that was spot on. He was really, yeah. that was really key, uh, you know, what he said about Yellen. Yeah, Yellen is gelling with, so someone took her to the woodshed and said, um, hey, listen, um, you got to get on the program here. Um, we're moving forward this digital asset thing. So, uh, and she, oh yeah, by the way, she comes out like a couple of days later. I love it. I mean, we should regulate it, but you know, it's the greatest thing ever. Hey, big shout out to um, XRP Carolina um, out there and also um, Andrew Nation, another dude. So, I, so when I hit pause, I think I lost the actual place online where we were. He said, did you? No, fire it up. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Let's, we'll listen go. to the last bit of that little piece again. Let's listen to this. Let's see. Here we go settlement to be done here somewhere and the settlement has to do with the distribution of the tokens so that existing token holders can continue to trade them and find value in them the way that they do yeah there you go and the way that like they that. yeah and the way that they do but that's a that's a really important one so now if we go back to what you know santiago velez was saying where he's basically um wow it takes so much to share a screen these days he says his view all along, digital asset has two components, method of distribution and operational decentralization. And if you think about it, that's kind of exactly the way the regulators in the UK looked at it, right? Saying that, yes, right. it, it functioned as a cryptocurrency, but also had a, it also had a use case. It's similar in nature. And that's where, you know, that's where on the show here, we always kind of like talk about, you know, one of the mainstays we talk about a lot, which is pretty, pretty simple is that decentralization is equal equal to freedom there you and go. if you and you know and one of the questions that was posed by my buddy saying he said is the dollar you know he's sending me little voice messages on um on um on whatsapp saying hey is it going to be that the dollar's useless that it's going to be on i said well yeah that's losing value every single day every single day it's lo losing value yeah. so yeah. you know he, he's actually spot on but this yeah. um it's a pretty right. good. It's a pretty interesting development here, though. I mean, I gotta say, it's. I thought so. I thought so. I thought it was puts things, you know, kind of in an interesting perspective. So, you know, you have people, you know, that come in like, you know, I, I just have to, you know, highlight, you know, so you get guys like Ash that come in here, yeah, and you know, I would, you know, I would believe, you know, what he's saying as well. You know, all these XRP YouTubers are paid agents by Ripple. You know, because why is it? You know, people, you see a lot of people that are hyping up you know, Ripple or XRP. Um, however, you come in here and you know, we're dissecting a real world use case where, you know, a lot of people are going to hype up numbers, you know, but it's it's really all about the use case. So if, you know, so, you know, from Ash, you know, it, you know, just, you know, straight out to him specifically, you know, you have to look through, you know, the significance of what Ripple represents and even more so, what the SEC case against Ripple and XRP represent. 
uh, because if the SEC case uh, goes all the way through and they find that XRP is in fact a security, that is the demise of a vast majority of the digital asset space overnight. Uh, it's it just one is going to fall after the other. And so, you know, are there a lot of people that are shilling uh, digital assets out there? I'm sure there are. Um, however, uh, those that are, you know, if you focus on Ripple and you really dissect it the way we do, uh, Chip, it's really more to look at it from a world, real world use case, um, you know, because the real world use case in the blockchain, in the digital asset space is what it's all about. Without the real world use case, it's all speculative. Uh, you know, as, as Bitcoin has become kind of it's, a, you know, a quasi store of value because that's what people believe it is, you know, and people have accepted it to be a store of value beyond that. Uh, what you know, I mean, it's well, man, let me let know. me let me add my two cents to that. So I see yeah. Flare community popped in for a second from the UK and uh, good to see you. I was I, I would say it like this. I, I honestly in my heart do not believe that there are any you know, I, I kind of get what you're alluding to. It's like a funny way to say that, but nobody's really paid agents. But I do think that, you know, the word clickbait has been overused. But if you put something up and, you know, we we put something up that's that's that, that maybe gets people's attention. But again, the way you look at it and some people are really, you know, they're bullish on stuff. I get it. You're going to pump it. But, I, you know, look. The more views equals more more you know um, value as far as the channels bringing in you know it comes in the form of fiat but then you know that can buy some digital assets so do I blame someone for doing that I don't I see lots of bandwagon hoppers too you know your bandwagon hoppers you know hey I got a law degree I'm hopping on this bandwagon I'm I'm blowing my I I got a horn over here doo, 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 you know and I got this thing over here and I'm like riding through you know that's fine I mean that's cool but. You don't want to hop on the bandwagon and start, you know, tooting the horn and stuff like that. That's okay. I mean, look, there's all going to be all kinds of people. You put out a video and get 80,000 hits on it. Whoa, God bless you, man. All power to you. But, you know, that's what's nice about that's what's nice about the whole range. You know, you might like this attorney's view or you maybe one day you like this view, but you don't like that view and the next day it switches up. But again, what makes it kind of um, interesting and fun is that you don't what we here's what we don't want. We don't want one you know, choice. You know, we don't want, oh no, you must all conform to the group think and nobody should chill. No, I mean, some people are going to be really Bitcoin. Yeah, some people are like Bitcoin. Some people are going to be bullish on, on, on altcoins. But what I like about it is that the freedom to do and say what you want to say and, and say it the way you want to say it in a much the same way we do it on this channel. We have our own sort of positions and, you know, sometimes you and I get into it like, yeah, I agree, I disagree. And that's that's cool. I mean, that's what makes it semi-interesting or somebody will throw something on have a question and i think that's what makes it interesting but i think we should yeah. probably talk about the uh the 800 pound gorilla in the room which is tesla tesla right? god yeah. i mean that's dude that that to me i i was excited with micro strategy you yeah. know the fact that that michael saylor man he's the guy i mean that guy is leading the wave because there have been others that have dabbled he put a billion dollars into bitcoin yeah. elon musk comes in he goes you know what you put in a, a billion i'm putting in a billion and a half puts in a billion and a half you know for tesla a billion and a half into bitcoin and says that they're going to start utilizing digital asset whether it's bitcoin or other i'm sure it'll be also other uh to uh, there's something going on it's not just hey you can buy our cars with uh with digital asset they are going to find a way to incorporate digital asset into the infrastructure of the vehicle somehow oh that's a that's a really good point and you know my buddy that reached out to me today he was so he, just from an outsider's view he's he's looking at this and he says you know what do you th he was asking me what i thought of it but he had an interesting perspective he said don't you think that if you're gonna if you're gonna be able to buy a tesla with bitcoin don't you think if you have bitcoin today and it's worth you know forty seven thousand dollars but then like maybe three months from now it's worth eighty thousand he goes, do you see that as a, I see that as an amazing thing. And I, he goes, the thing I'm worried about is most of the people out there don't see that potential yet. They don't understand why someone like an Elon Musk would put 1.5 billion or Michael Saylor or, you know, in micro strategies, they don't really understand it. But there was that giant FUD article that just slammed Michael Saylor. It just said he was the one responsible for getting into Bitcoin and he's brought the whole company down. But then 
<laughs> then he wins, you know? It's like, then he wins, and it's like, well, where's that article today? And it was like in one of these, like, hoity-toity publications, you know, one of these premier publications. And uh, like all of these talking heads, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. It's like all of these experts, like, what do you think? And they tell you what you think. It's like they're living in a, a different world. They're living in La La Land 15 years ago. They're not living today. <laughs> yeah, but man, I'll tell you what. So, so we've got, uh, you know, you got Bitcoin surging, um, but you've got Ethereum is surging. Uh, you've got XRP moving up. Uh, you've got and then there's all these other projects. So I started digging in this weekend into Polkadot, uh, HBAR. Um, I mean, there, there was a whole slew of them. And I'm looking on the sidelines. I'm like, man, is it too late to get in right now? They pumped like over the past couple months and they pumped massive amounts over the past. I'm talking, you know, from thousands of percent, right, over a couple month period. And I'm looking at these and I'm looking for new projects. I'm like, man, there's got to be in the DeFi space stuff popping up. Then I looked at Uniswap and Uniswap's trading at like 18, 19, 20 dollars. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Uniswap is the place right now for DeFi. You know, that's where the exchange is. And, and they're processing huge amounts of transactions. And I start looking at, and I'm like, man, there's so much more in this space and the whole everything. is just like there's this momentum right now that's being created. I mean, it's, it's unreal. I mean, it really, it's this Elon Musk thing to me though, like you said, the 800 pound gorilla that just, I think just legitimate, you know, made everything legitimate. It, it, it's moving forward. I think we're going to see so much more. Yeah. And, and, and what's happening inside the space right now and you know, yeah, now today it's Bitcoin, but tomorrow it's going to be the top 10 and then the top 15, the top 25, you know, it's going to be that, Hey, what's going on? Notorious. Notorious, Not, notorious, notorious. What is up? Five, eight, nine. Well, hell yeah, we hear you, man. Still putting out those quality videos, man. Leading you to the promised land, and I don't know what font you use on there, man, but I can never ping you. We'll like I try to, I try to like do an at sign and like, and and it's like some weird font. And even if I copy and paste it, I can't. Yep. Ping them in there. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the other. There's another one that's uh, just down below, but I I clicked this, so I gotta open it up. Do you think app because this one this is yours apple will sit on the sidelines with its huge cash reserves or are they about out, about to announce what tesla did just did what, what do you think yeah you know i'm just absolutely dumbfounded by apple and google as companies as having huge coffers of you know billions of dollars apple has over 100 billion dollars just sitting there a lot of it's overseas they can't bring it back because of the taxation but I'm thinking to myself, are they going to, what, you know, what exactly are they going to do? But, you know, Apple just invested three point, I don't know, three point two billion dollars into Kia, you know, to to help build the car in partnership. Um, I would think it's, you know, with Apple Pay and how easy it is and other things, you know, a lot of people are looking at, you know, patents they might be filing. I just don't see either one of them sitting it out for very long. They've got it. You can't be that tone deaf unless you're tone based, but you could, but I just, I don't know. I mean, are you shocked at Google and they're just sitting around? They're not doing anything. I mean, if anything, I would just start some acquisitions, right? I would start they, acquiring. Yeah. And if they worry, I mean, we'd know they are. I mean, it, they would have to file it just like uh, Elon Musk with Tesla. They had to file with the SEC that they bought a billion dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. So High Desert Garden, 999. Thank you, man. He says, what is the news on the XRP settlement? That is a very good question. Now, I don't know anything about a settlement. I mean, there's been a lot of people in the community that have sort of guessed at what might happen. There's a pretrial hearing that's coming up. Is it 22nd, Jeff? It's supposed Remember? to be the 22nd, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretrial hearing. It's gonna be telephonic. It's probably gonna be a very dis big disappointment for most people. But I do think that if the you know somebody somebody out there in, in, in Twitter crypto Twitter put out something that said well you know if they already did all the discovery if they've already looked at stuff if they're going back and they lifted the you know going back to April of 2019 lifted the five year you know um, what is that called the five year to suspend the five year um, the period of time that they can look back sorry it's eluding me right now. Will there be a settlement? I, I, I don't necessarily know there'll be a settlement. I definitely feel like there might be a fine involved, but 
you know, you can look at some other things. There's a lot of huffing and puffing around kick and the kin token and well, $5 million after all that. And they were like, we're going to get, we're taking the SEC down. You're going down all this like fighting words where Ripple has handled this very professionally, you know, and you look at their answer. They didn't have to, you know, just the fact that they answered the complaint. A lot of times when you do that, you have, you lay out at least, what your main points are. Now they can get into like fine detailed stuff. They're not showing all their cards, but they hit a lot of the, the, you know, the answer came out, what is it, a week ago, maybe? Some time frame. So, yeah, I mean, we're just gonna have to it sit is. tight and see what happens, but I do know this. You look at what's happening in the market in 2021. You look at how things are just taking off and even projects, I mean, even Doge, you know, Doge is uh, back up to eight cents, seven, eight cents, right? From point Doge. zero zero three or whatever it was when I once owned it back in the day, going years back, you know when we when we look at the entire space, um, it's listen, you know the one asset that's going to be on sale is going to be XRP. I don't care if it's a dollar, four dollars, six dollars, it's still not going to be twenty. It's still not going to be uh, who knows what what Bitcoin's going to be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand. But when more companies come in, they're going to be looking for other places to put their money, right, Jeff? They're going to be saying, okay, Bitcoin here, but hey, look at that. There's a whole field of different coins out there. Now, look well, they, at this one. They have to, it, and they're going to go through a, pro, a progression. They come into Bitcoin. They've invested. Now they look at the next one that's rising up. And so if you have a flood coming into Bitcoin, just think grayscale has a has an ethereum trust and there's going to be more and more interest in in ethereum this is going to push ethereum to the next level so right now it's hovering where it's hovering but it's got to start following a little bit more in uh in the bitcoin footsteps so but bitcoin is pushing to 43,000 44 45,000 i mean it's it's definitely interesting to, and this could be a short term bull run i mean this bull run could evaporate and everything pulls back but when you have, you know, Tesla, Elon Musk, and you have uh, MicroStrategy, keep adding more and more money to it. You know that these guys aren't just, you know, short term. I'm going to put a bill, a billion dollars. I mean, could you imagine that the what it takes to move a billion dollars into into Bitcoin? I mean, the idea behind it, it's it's, it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. It's monumental, and we're starting to see, you know, the real world use cases and. They've now solidified that the real world use case is a store of value and, you know, there it's a hedge against the dollar, a hedge against every other currency. And it it creates this foundation to the bottom line of their, uh, you know, of, of their of their accounting. I mean, it's it's really amazing. I mean, it just it's mind boggling to me you know, to see what's happening right now. You know, after all these years of talking about it and you're starting to see it happen. Yeah, I wanted to go back real quick to the uh, guy who sold his 10,000 for BTU. <laughs> yeah, oh, the 10,000 BTU guy. Now, now, we have the, now we have the Walmart guy, which is uh, James Rule XRP. That's right, living on the XRP. Uh, Anthony uh, Ballister over here. Uh, maybe you guys can explain this uh, uh, better, but I'm really confused as to why all these smart people keep dumping money into BTC. The tech is... So shite. shite. I mean, to me, it's, you know, Chip, it's it's just, you know, name recognition, first mover advantage. It's it's the first on the block and, and it's it's gained it's gained uh, uh, not just respect, but it's gained the authority of the digital asset. It's going to be the uh, the Kleenex of of the world. You know, it's just yeah. it, it's gaining that kind of after. Right. But here's the thing. I mean, look, I mean, it's value is the fact that it's a store of value, right? The fact that you put into it, you know, some people bought it at 3000, but they, some people owned it when it was, you know, a hundred bucks and they just held on to it. Some people bought it at the first bull run back in 2017, 2018, when it, when it hit a, a, an all time high, uh, just touched 20,000 USD. And then it dropped like, like right down. But some, it, now people hit the panic button they held it, right? So now they more than doubled their money. So it's it's not a really about the tech, you know, to look at Bitcoin 
as and but I think your assertion is right. It's if you look at it for the tech, you're going to be disappointed. Why? Because it's slow, and you need the lightning, uh, you know, network to be able to to move stuff in real time. There's always this stuff you have to add onto it because you know Jeff and I have talked about this before. We just don't think they were finished with with Bitcoin. It just was. It was very early. They didn't get to finish it, and then there's no structure right now to evolve it or make that's why you have the lightning network right they have to build these little side chains and an underlying tech but i think if you look at it like that like technology like hey it doesn't have a use case like say like a ripple or or xl you know xlm you know stellar lumens or you know any of the other ones you know ethereum you name it you know polka dot being you know a great blockchain if you look at it like that you'd be disappointed if you look at it like hey i can put i can dump whatever i got into this and rather than sit in a bank and, and earn 0.25% interest, I have the chance in two, three, four years of quadrupling or going even further with my money. And the more companies that come into it, it's, it's adding to the mental ability. It's always been there. But when people, as, an, as, a, as like a globe, when people start buying into the idea and companies, you know, Elon, you know, Tesla just threw down. But like Jeff was saying, don't never forget the for, you know forget the guy who dug the well and the guy that dug that well Jeff is named Michael Sailor Sailor and or he I think that's how you pronounce it yeah. yeah Sailor I think that's it Sailor and he's the guy that they called Crazy Town right that's right yeah here's here's something though Chip you know and I I think it's interesting where XRP brings it up Greta Thunberg is pissed that one billion dollars <laughs> flood into BTC. She's like, dude, you're killing trees, <laughs> bruh. Come on. But I think he brings up an interesting point because we know the amount of uh, power consumption that's required for Bitcoin. On the other side, you have these guys over at Ripple that keep preaching green energy. So now the battle of the, these, uh, you know, this political environmental discussion is now going into the digital asset space. But it's it's a losing battle. It's a losing proposition. You can't, you know, you're not going to be able to 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 defeat Bitcoin with that argument. It, it just it's not going to work. Um, mm. At least it's not going to work now. It might take years and years and years until they scale something and figure out a way to decrease the consumption of energy. But I just think it's just it's just kind of a losing uh, uh, cause. You know that narrative. You know, oh, I just, uh, it I is. Just don't get it. I totally agree with that. I want to go back to this tweet, High Desert Garden. He's talking about this because I, this is kind of an interesting sort of an aside where Stephen Pally basically sounded off on the U, um, on the SEC lawsuit against Ripple and predicts that the payments firm will settle with the regulatory body. So he, he sent out this tweet storm. It said, I wouldn't be surprised if they asked for another 30 days and filed a nearly guaranteed to be denied motion to dismiss, but they didn't. Now, he's, he's a very high-powered attorney Stephen Pally is an attorney over at um, Anderson Kill, and he's not just like you know, he's not like a nobody. So if we if we look at it in this sense, he says that um, he also believes the SEC already fully laid out its case in the in its early stage, and he goes on to say, typical and typically in civil litigation, you don't get the other side's documents until the case progresses for a while. That's what I was mentioning before, earlier. And he's kind of right about that. Usually discovery comes later in the game. You file a complaint and you get discovery. But because the SEC did discovery early, what is discovery? Well, uh, discovery is send us your emails. Oh, can you then you can you send us all your documents related to this? Oh, can we look at all your, you know, and, and this gets this is why a lot of times when you see when you see lawsuits that are filed, there are a lot of times they're strategic, right? It's to it's to sway public opinion. Now, something gets filed. And they don't realize that there's a, there's a real high profile case. I don't want to talk about it because of the nature of it, but they file a, a multi billion dollar case against an individual. What what they're forgetting about is the fact that there's going to be discovery on both sides. So just because one side has to produce, so does the other side. So when you have discovery involved, and this is kind of the case he's making right now, he says, in other words, the SEC probably has all its bad documents, smoking guns already, and already included them in the lawsuit. The blockchain lawyer adds that Ripple may have a tough time arguing its sales of XRP should not be seen as an offering. And Jeff, I wanted to co what was on screen right there? Oh, sorry. Put that put that up there. Sorry, I was getting this out. I was back getting... to Anthony. Anthony said, "Then uh, forever be disappointed." Thank you for the response. <laughs> nice. Well, Anthony, sorry. To, well, sorry to disappoint there, but I wanted sorry. to. Here's another one right there. Sorry. 
How long does the bull run last? You know, I'll tell you how long a bull run lasts. As long as it lasts. That's a silly answer. But think about it like this, Jeff. A bull run. Usually a bull run is eclipsing an all-time all high. So we had at one time, back in 2017, 2018, XRP actually hit, I think, and it's, there's a little bit of, people say right around $3.84, right? Because I've asked people, hey, how, what, was it, what do you think the all-time high was? They're like, I don't know, 90 cents, a dollar? No, 384 on speculation. So the bull run lasts for how long? But you see right now, it's a bullish market right now, but it's cycling, right? It's cyclical. It's like all of a sudden weekend. Jeff called it last week. He said, I expect the weekend sell-off. Boom, he nailed it. Saturday, everything was red. Didn't last long, but people started taking profits. They're sitting around on Saturday, you know, you know, doing the normal chores and going here and going there, going to the bakery, going to the food store. And, oh, yeah, oh, my listen. digital assets. Let me gotta, <laughs> gotta, gotta sell those and take some logos. profits. Yeah. Apex says uh, crypto is a network effect. I saw this fly by before. Unseen before in any asset class, only 1 million people globally hold crypto currently. Lots of upside for Bitcoin, in my opinion, but I agree, only one use case. There you go. That was, uh, I'd seen that kind of fly up before. I thought that was important. Yeah, and I, I wanted to, so so it's funny, this Michael Pally guy, right? So I wanted to pull up his, uh, I wanted to pull up his um, his Twitter page because he's got some interesting stuff on it. This is him right here. Again, he's partners in an Anderson Kill, a, a big time law firm. I love his, um, he's got this super badass distortion box. That's a guitar filter, but it's, you know, it's pretty cool. It's like, you wouldn't expect an attorney, you know, someone who wears, you know, a shirt and tie to be like really cool. Not legal advice. I contain multitudes. And then um, Michael Arrington, he pinned this tweet um, on the 24th, right? Um, it said, Michael Arrington said, Pally is a nice guy, but not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And so, you know, he pinned this to the top because, you know, he, Somebody who can take, you know, the who can laugh at themselves is is a good sport, right? We do a lot of that here, and you guys do a lot of that, where you you point things out, there's things we say a lot, whatever it might be, and um, talks about a thing. But I wanted to show this one because this is another one he says. It's like if you look at this, why do you hate freedom? <laughs> why do you hate freedom? Oh. And that goes back to Jeff. A lot of what we talk about is the the whole decentralization nature, right? And to get back to his tweet storm over here, he said, Ripple says the SEC selectively quotes from the law firm opinion letter. I suspect we'll eventually see that as an exhibit, though maybe filed under seal. Sadly, not here. Allegation and answer. There's only so much you can do with bad advice. And he, let's see if I can. Yeah, so he talks about this. Um, in 2014, Larson explained in an email. He, he just He's going through this thing, picking it apart making some really good comments about that. But I thought I'd go tie that back to High Desert Garden because it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Now, they would have settled. Just know that Brad Garlinghouse is very vocal in public saying that they would have settled. However, I'm pretty sure that what was involved in that settlement, which was a fine or whatever, probably didn't include any clarity about how they might move forward. And one of the things that we talked about the other day when John Deaton pointed out in a, a tweet thread, he basically said, how is it that the SEC allowed Ripple to invest in a money transmitter, which is what it's called in the complaint, which is MoneyGram. They asked the SEC, hey, by the way, SEC, we wanna go ahead and make this investment. It's gonna be 9%. We're gonna use our digital asset XRP. We're gonna gift it to them and then they're gonna sell it. Then in the very next sentence, the SEC is complaining Jeff, about selling, that they sold it too fast and there was no restrictions around it when they asked the SEC if they could eventually, you know, could invest. The same way, the same way um, Elon Musk came out and asked the SEC. I mean, what do you think about that? Suspicious. It is, yeah, for sure. That's a short answer. It might be a very, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, a shortest answer I've ever had. Yeah. No. Hey. You huh? You could have said yes, but that yes. was like, that's even shorter. Next, then just, yeah. make a, next time, make a guttural yeah. sound like, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So check this out. I was trying to find it. Now it's gone. Where'd it go? Um, oh, here we go. Nope. Oh, gone. Seep is right. It should be an all-time high by now. Found it. Go ahead. Go for okay, it. Okay. So this is on Zero Hedge. Uh, oh, yeah. This was posted earlier uh, today. And this is Novogratz. He said, the herd is coming. 
and he sees Bitcoin at 100,000 as every company begins to buy it. Uh, and this is it's it's interesting, kind of kind of re you know cycling back to where we're at. This it's amazing when you start seeing more and more people within Main Street uh, financial space, and they want to start talking about Bitcoin. They want to start talking about the valuation of it. Most of these guys, they probably don't even know about all these other digital assets. It'd be interesting even to talk to uh, Michael uh, Saylor, at, you know, at MicroStrategy or Elon Musk and find out how many other digital asset projects are they really looking at? You know, what is their thought process on the entire space? You know, it's, it was interesting how, you know, Elon Musk, you know, sent out a tweet. All he said was Doge. And then someone That's asked awesome. him to explain himself and he came back. He says, oh, well, you know, sometimes you just got to, you know, clown around or whatever. But, you know, clowning around, you know, that tweet supposedly pushed, uh, pushed Doge up, you know, another level. You know, I, I don't know. You know, it's crazy. It just, you know, everything that's happening. One of the things that we had talked about early on also was that there are digital assets out there that are part of a solution to an actual existing problem. There's other digital assets and blockchain projects out there that are solutions in search of a problem. And those are the projects that most likely are going to go away at some point. Uh, and it's just a matter of, I, I wonder when, I mean, at some point it has to happen, right? The nineties, big tech boom, uh, you know, anything with a dot com after it just, you know, exploded at some point though, there was a reckoning and that reckoning just wiped out all the other companies that just didn't have the substance. Exactly. Look at this. I want to say hi to coining 203. That's Alex, a friend of the show has been on the show a couple of times. But look at Sailor. Look what Sailor said. He said, congratulations and thank you to Elon Musk and Tesla on adding Bitcoin to the balance sheet. The entire world will benefit from this leadership. Meanwhile, the whole world is benefiting from Michael Saylor's initial start. The guy that does it oh. first is always the crazy one, right? The one that they throw overboard, the one that they say, get this nut job. And they go, oh my gosh, you know, that was the one that said the earth is round. You blasphemous, burn him at the stake, you know. And then like, so Sailor's the one that ignited it, but he's making a really good point here because without someone high profile, yeah, Michael Saylor, everyone knows MicroStrategies. Some people have never heard of MicroStrategies, but everyone's heard of Elon Musk. Everyone knows Elon Musk from the PayPal cabal, right? You know, the, 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 the PayPal mafia, they call it, came out of that whole thing. You know, people always said that, a lot of people inferred that maybe Elon Musk, maybe he's uh, Satoshi, you know, who knows? But... But what's interesting is like you want to I want to jump in these tweets, Jeff, because this is the joking around that he's talking about. There it is. Who let the doze out? Who? <laughs> and then this one was the best because it wasn't until they put Snoop on there. So they uh, so they, here's the here's the here's the chain of events. So you know, first of all, you got Elon Musk lifting up Gene Simmons, lifting up Snoop. Lifting up the Doge. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just oh, that's bad. an awesome one. Look at that Doge. <laughs> no, that. the Doge, awesome, you know, uh, whoever did this is just absolutely fantastic. You're going to see it in its full context, right? He's like, so finally it's come to this. Well, it has come to that. But, you know, the funny part about that is, is when you, when you look at that, whoever did that is just brilliant because... It does, it do, it's, it's all together, right? So Elon comes out and you got Gene Simmons who's kicking it around. And every time these people, whoever they are, have a sphere of influence. So what we are seeing is the acceleration of adoption that is just permeating the globe. Okay, we, have a, we had a series of geopolitical things that went down. We had the GameStop thing where the, everyone woke up one day and said, huh, the whole game's ri rigged, Jeff. They just said it's rigged. And now we've got digital assets to the rescue. That's right. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for for real, man. But so many people, man. I you know, uh, you know, I, I just it's amazing. I see people that are now getting into digital asset for the very first time in the retail space, and I know they're going to be moving and investing a significant amount of money there, but they're moving there now. You know, think about we were, you know, at, you brought up, early, you know, before Bitcoin at 20,000, Bitcoin at 10,000, Bitcoin at 5,000 or 3,000. Imagine, you know, we're at that point and yet the retail, a lot of these people, Elon Musk, 
they weren't there at that point, but they're there no. now when it's 40 something thousand putting a billion dollars in probably doesn't matter so much whether it's 40,000 or 5,000 at the end of the day, you know, because you're still going to get your percentage gains. Um, but there's a lot of people in the retail space, same thing. They're now just getting into it and it's exciting. I was talking to my neighbor. Uh, he was telling me about his grandson, 27 years old, big investor in stock. And I said, he's probably heard of uh, digital assets. He goes, oh, you're talking about cryptocurrency. And I said, yeah, he goes, oh yeah, he's big into crypto. I'm like, man, this is, uh, it's like, it's starting to, it's starting to happen. You know, the revolution is, is definitely occurring right now. And I'm sure if you tune in on TV, it might even be televised by Jungle Inc. Jungle Inc. Yeah. So this is, so I get this text earlier today from my dad. He says, you know, I took mom to uh, Dr. Velez's office and I'm thinking that's, is that guy a doctor too? <laughs> we were just talking about Velez, right? He said at the Parkinson's clinic and when Dr. Velez mentioned Bitcoin, I immediately mentioned you and your podcast on the chain with Chip and Jeff and he and, and wrote it down and gave it to him. I'm like, dad's out there promoting the show, Jeff. <laughs> so I gotta say uh, that's pretty cool, you know, um, that he's out there doing that. Hey, but uh, let me just pull this one up. So what what is our crafty community? How do they answer, Elon? Boom, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There you go. There you go. And he said, uh, this is um, uh, XRP. Um, and he says, e XRP is next. I love, you know, you know, one of the things I like about Elon Musk is like he has a sense of humor and that I don't give a rat's behind. It's like he goes out there and says stuff. The SEC is going to find me. He's like, I don't care. He's going to be who he's going to be. He goes on, um, he goes on a podcast smoking a bone you know he doesn't care man he's living his life he's doing it his way and if he wants to say who let the doge out he's gonna do it you know it's let finally uh it let is what out. it is let it out man and so <laughs> and the guy who's got 46 million followers on twitter is out there doing what is he saying being awesome he's being awesome man hey, so so, so <laughs> hey so, so, so what's up with this bitwise then you you posted something here earlier. I was going through it. Bitwise has filed just filed a prospectus with the SEC for an ETF to track crypto innovators. I think that's just really stunningly exciting. You know, I was I was looking at uh, I was going through the different Ark investment funds yesterday, and I discovered that one of the innovation funds holds Grayscale. Uh, and I forgot what the exact percentage of holdings are in grayscale, but that's key, right? Because there's a, you know, ARK investment. If, if you haven't seen that one, I know Chip, you have with Kathy Wood. She's oh, really, Kathy she's Wood. one of the number one people right now in the space and her investments are just, you know, mooning like every single one of them. It's crazy what she's doing in the space. Um, but, but then I saw she's getting into grayscale. So I saw you put this up. And I'm like, man, this is amazing because there's so many other innovators in the crypto space. Imagine having an ETF of innovators in the crypto space. I mean, the the possibilities, the amount, that value of that ETF would be huge. Yeah, and you know, it's like Jeff. Every single day, we can't even we can't even keep up. I mean, we we keep the show to an hour, but we can't keep up with it all. There's always stuff we can't get to. I mean. The fact is, it's just moving at light speed. It's amazing. It's everything's, you know, that took a little bit of time. You know, if you've been in this for a while, year, two, three, four years, you know, I got started in 2013. Where's the dance button at? <laughs> so, Jeff, oh, that was a funny thing. Grayscale and XLM. Yeah, well, it was an XRP at one point, but that didn't last. Jeff, I saw something else out there that I wanted to, to bring up here. And this is the uh, Coin Telegraph's top 100. And if you look at who's oh, yeah. number 25, you have Hester Pierce. Okay, this these are the top people in crypto. Hester Pierce, a commissioner, and the SEC, her organization, is suing the pants off of Ripple and destroyed the marketplace for XRP investors. But okay, she's number 25 on the list. First yeah. of all, this is a very well, sad list, I will tell you that. <laughs> it is pretty. I and, and not only that, but some of these images, like you know, I like Camilla <laughs> Russo. I, 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 I whose idea was it? That's what I would dude, like to know. Whoever's idea that was, you're fired. That's what it. is up? 
and this like sitting them in baskets of I don't know. It's like supposed to be like a bust. My God. Yeah. What is, are what are they wearing? I mean, is is it a bust? Well, it's like be wearing some like uh, oh you know is it a spacesuit? Well, is no. That, this is like this is like those um what do you call those things you used to wear in Greece? You know those little things around your is that head with the, I don't know, man. It's like here it says right. It's just very bizarre. What and is, this is always weird position too. It says adoption, and it's like oh the hand right there. It's very strange. And then you have here. You know, these are like their little pins, but yeah, I don't know. Some of these, you know, they have Akon <laughs> on here. They have, um, let's see, there was one. Justin Davy Duke here said, these people mean nothing. They're not controllers of a world market. They're you nothing. Go. They're yeah. nothing now. They're influencers. I, yes, Ryan Sulkis, yeah, you know. They're in a Fallout 3 costume. <laughs> Dude, this is the best one right here. Look at this one. The U.S. Marshal Service, why? Because they auctioned a billion dollars in Bitcoin seized from right. Silk Road. That, and billion. it's the Eagle. It's and Mike strange. Novogratz, okay, he's where, deserving where of this. Where did you find this thing? Very First strange. of all, Laura Shin, who's the unabetted hack, the biggest hack in, in inside of digital currencies, hater of Ripple, hater of most things. She did that one podcast where she had those attorneys on and she was laughing. <laughs> you know, Rip, Ripple, God, they're going to get sued. And the one attorney's going, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. Oh, boy. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, nobody even listens to her podcast. I mean, God bless her. She's, I know she's a better journalist than almost anything else. But let's look at who else is on here. Jed McCaleb's on here. But you know who's not on here, Jeff? Do you want to wonder, keep an idea? Nobody from no. Ripple's on here. Not You're one not, person. We're not on there. Well, we, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but Oxymax is on there. So CC swap, right? Sushi swap. Remember that the guy? Oh yeah. Yeah. We have pulled sushi a, swap is still around. Yeah. He pulled a quick one. Whale pandas on here. This is yep. the only one I feel deserving. I don't know who that is, but Alex Mashinsky. <laughs> there you go. That almost looks like him. Almost. Maybe. I mean, that, that's, that's definitely a panda. I will give it that, but he's got hey, like some. Hey Chip, I just wanted to take a second for all those that are new to the channel if you haven't done so already, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notifier because every time we post a new video, you'll, you'll definitely get notified. Sometimes when we get these videos started, you'll notice we put like a two, three minute timer in the beginning that lets us work all the technical glitches out, but it also allows all those notifications to go out. Sometimes it takes anywhere between a minute and a half and two minutes for that notification to go out, but definitely hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up if you guys are enjoying. And if you guys want to continue to support the on the chain efforts over here, make sure you share our videos and drive more people over here. Um, we, we had well over 700 people on the live stream today. Um, and as we were all talking, I don't know if it was as we were talking, XRP fell to the number six spot. Oh, Cardano yeah. and Polkadot have both pushed through the, the ceiling there. Polkadot number four, Cardano number five, XRP number six. Bitcoin, $46,000 right now. Ethereum, seventeen twenty eight. dollars 28 Tether, 98 cents. How does Tether Jeff, go to 98 cents? An important, important announcement, just for the record, that happened before we started streaming. Just saying, okay? And um, guys, also subscribe to our podcast. And again, Jose said came in here and he was like one of the first people in. He said, hey, you know what, guys, first time I'm watching you live, I'm used to listening to you on Spotify because that's one of the places you can listen to it. Um, you can listen to it on there. So there it is right there. So you just simply, let me go ahead. Did I drop that in there? Let's see. Here we go. Drop it in there. I just dropped it in the chat right there. So you guys, you go over there and you basically just... Um, Click the subscribe button. You see if you want if you listen to Spotify, if you're if you're depending on what you like, what you listen to, Spotify, Stitcher, any one of these ones. So it's cool. Usually Apple, Google. Sometime we'll have to share the stats from there. It's pretty interesting. And we'll have to share some stats where people come in from. But the reason we say that, like, oh no, they're gonna ask us to subscribe again. You wanna know why? Because forty percent of the people that watch our videos aren't subscribed. It used to be higher. It used to be more like 50%, but it's around 40, 45%. That's awesome. Hey, uh, just real quick on this, Vlad, does anyone have any idea when Spark will happen or one day we'll just wake up with flair in our wallets? I, I kind of have a feeling that's how it's going to happen. I'm going to forecast wake up it. And it's going to be there at some point, anytime between now and the end of Q2. July 2025 is my safe bet. I think you'll have it by that. You know, it's like they'll roll down three years and I'm like, Let's just say five to be safe. You know, four years from now, 
No, it's going to it's going to happen. Welcome to Melinda Garcia. First time here. Welcome. And also just bought uh, my first crypto this month, according to Melinda. Best advice for first timers. Hang in there. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, coming in now, who knows where where this thing is going. Um, and, you know, we don't know when the, the pullbacks are, but hang in there. It's been an amazing ride, you know, for all these years. Um, I've been in since 2017 and it's been crazy up and down and sideways and every which way. Um, and I know Chip, you probably have the similar uh, kind of experience. Keep coming back in here uh, yeah. to our streams. You know, we're on every single night, Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Chip, I believe, will be rolling out a brand new spot Sunday afternoons right before our roundtable. Yeah, and this so, came onto your be stream awesome. because a lot of people were asking for it, saying, "Hey, what about hey, what about us on the other side of the world, man? We can't we can't be watching your stream at two in the morning every time. You guys do, and we love you for it. But um, the other thing, the other first time advice I'll give you is like, look, um, there's going to be a lot of naysayers. They're like, why did you do that? You're dumb, this and that. Listen, just got to sometimes eliminate a lot of the noise. You know, kind of trust your gut a little bit and trust what's going on and, and read everything you can read and and look at projects, but kind of look at stuff from a way of you know, how do you, how does it land on you? You know, are they solving a problem? Is it something interesting? Is it a store of value? The 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 space is getting mature enough to where it's getting more cool to be into crypto. It's not like that, oh, are you gonna start to crypto again? No, I'd be like, Oh yeah. Everyone's reaching out to me. Hey, Quinn Rivers, just subbed. Beautiful. Just Thank you, subbed. Quinn. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that sub. We'll look forward to seeing everybody back on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, keep on hodling and all that other good stuff. And we'll bring a ton of all sorts of amazing things to talk about tomorrow night. Yep. And we'll see you on the next one. Chip, Jeff, out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.